So we are going to go to Anonymous in Syracuse, Indiana. Anonymous, are you with us? Yes, I am. And oh. guess what the question is? The question is, why are you Protestant? Why am I Protestant? Okay, <laughs> well, like many others, I'm Protestant, mostly because I was born Protestant. Okay. Um, I was raised in an Anabaptist family. My parents were Amish. I was raised yes. Mennonite, and I live in a very um, large Mennonite community. And honestly, Catholicism was never even on my radar. Like <laughs> I can relate. Know, in, <laughs> yeah, like in high school, I think maybe we had one Catholic family, you know. And yeah. um, so, and then the little touches that I had with Catholicism, just I wasn't interested. You know, yes. like I went to a Catholic wedding, and it was like ridiculous. You know, like <laughs> everybody was drunk, and it was crazy, and it was just like I, I just. I couldn't. Well, I can assure I, I you. I can assure you, anonymous, having been married two years ago in the Catholic Church, the wedding with my wife was nothing like that. So that must like have been that. that must have been an anomaly. Now, now, and yeah, mind you, I, it wasn't the wedding. I'm sure you're talking about the reception. Exactly. <laughs> it would be right. really bad if it's at the wedding. <laughs> right. Exactly. It was the reception, but right. it was yes. just there was nothing along the way that right. would have made me interested at all. Uh, sure. Until about three. Months ago, I have a long drive to work, and I was so tired of NPR, and I couldn't, I, you know what, I didn't want sports talk. Okay. I, found, I find Christmas, Christian radio pretty um, boring, um, and all of that. So I was just channel surfing, and I found Catholic radio. And I was, first of all, I was just blown away. Like, um, So I've been listening a lot the last three months, um, but things that have... And there's a lot of things I don't have an issue with, like the yes. idea of a universal church yes. and a universal authority. Like I, I actually believe in that, yeah. but it's just. Hard. But then, so who who should have that authority? Yes. That's that's not really my question, though. Okay. okay? So because what? Yeah. Really so what Catholic, is what is really getting at okay, you? Anonymous? So here, let let me tell you what. A hur- so why am I not Catholic? Yes. Okay. okay? And help me with sure. this hurdle, and it might just be personal, but it it, okay. it has to do with the physical part of Catholicism, okay? okay? Like, I would hear stories sometimes about, like, there was miracles by, some, like, a Virgin Mary statue or something, and yes. she was crying, and I just thought, like, that just seems crazy, like, it, like you know, hocus-pocus stuff or whatever. Right. So that was in the past. Right. But even now today, like, a couple times I've been in Catholic churches, and I find the statues, like, really offensive, like, like personally right. offensive, and let me explain a little bit why. Sure. Like, growing up... Um, in the Amish tradition, yes. um, you don't even take pictures because yes. those are graven images, you know? Right. So, like, in my home now, even though I'm no longer even Mennonite, I am just in a mainstream Protestant church. Right. Like, I don't have nativities in my home. I don't have pictures sure. of Jesus in my home. I don't wear a cross with a crucifix. That is very you know? consistent where many Protestants are not anonymous. That's right. I really appreciate what you're saying. You know what? I think I got the gist of this, so if I could jump in, Anonymous... I think the key here is to understand, even from the Old Testament, that that understanding, that Amish sort of Mennonite understanding, is really not biblical. When you go back to the Old Testament, for example, in Exodus 20, where you have the Ten Commandments, right? Thou shalt not make any graven image of any likeness of anything, be it in heaven or earth or under the sea. If you go just five chapters later, just five chapters in Exodus 25, verse 18, what do you have? God commands Moses to make the Ark of the Covenant, and on top of the, over top of the mercy seat, you have two enormous, over five foot tall, golden angels. They're, they're uh, cherubim. And so God, com- and, and I love the way that it, it's written there in the King James Version, it says, thou shalt make two golden cherubim out of beaten gold. So wait a minute, God said no statues, and then he commands Moses to make a statue. And think of this as well. The Ark of the Covenant, where the Ark, where you have these enormous golden statues, became a source of God's grace and God's power for, for God's people. And then you go to Numbers chapter 21, verses 8 and 9, and you see when Moses and the children of Israel were in the wilderness, and they began to rebel against God, God sends a plague of snakes among them, Moses intercedes for them, God commands Moses once again. He says, make a brazen serpent, put it up on a pole, and when the children of Israel looked to it, 
they were healed. Now, note, now you and I know that that in John chapter 3, verses 11 and 12, in the New Testament, we find that is a type or an image representing the coming Christ. But nevertheless, the point is God uses stuff. He uses the physical world to be instruments whereby he brings his blessing to his people. And so even in the Old Testament, you have that. Now, even though you don't have any images of God in the Old Testament, because God in in Deuteronomy 4.16 has a, a stricture against having images of God, but even there, it's an interesting point here, Anonymous. He says, God tells them why. He says, I did not command you concerning the making of images when I brought you out of Israel because I took no form among you. So God tells them why. I don't want you making forms because I didn't take a form. Well, guess what? In the New Testament, he does. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we believe, Anonymous, that in the Incarnation now, God has become flesh. And so while we only have that limited use of images in the Old Testament, we have a much f- a fuller sense of images in the New Testament because, well, principally, in Colossians chapter 1, uh, verse 14 and 15, especially verse 15, it says, Christ is is the image of God, the firstborn of all creation. And the the Greek word there for image is ikon, or icon. Christ is the ultimate icon because of the incarnation. We believe in the, the incarnation, God became physical, and so he relates to us physically. Not that he didn't in the old. Yes, he did through the ark but, you know, the ark and, and the, the brazen serpent and such, but now it's a much more intimate So, Tim, let's, physical let's pull this together, and then Anonymous will, will hear from you. So you're saying, Tim, that when God comm- said, do not make graven images, he wasn't saying not make images of any kind, because he later commanded people to make images. Yes. Rather, he was forbidding the creation of images people would worship in idolatry. At absolutely right, Trent. And Anonymous, he's condemning idolatry, not the making of statues, because if he was condemning the making of statues, he contradicts himself. Right, because he, he wouldn't command you later to do something he said not to do before. So Anonymous, that was a lot to take in. Is that is that helpful for what you were, you're searching through? It It is helpful. I do One question that you know sure. I'd have as a follow-up is the sure. Old Testament and the New Testament thing, but I can read about that. I do have one more question, though, that's related to this physical, okay? Okay. Like, the dwell, like in the tavern, like, um, you know, do you believe that the presence of God is in the building, like the cathedrals or whatever? Because, you know, like, like I go there and the presence of God dwells there. Because, mm-hmm. like, that's a hang-up I have, too. Like, right. like in Ephesians 2, where it says, we are being built into the dwelling place of God yes. in spirit, and where two or three are gathered, I'm there in your midst. So yes. what what is it about, like, sure. that the presence of God is in a building? Absolutely. Yeah. Here, the, you, you ask a very important question. First of all, we believe, just as you do, Anonymous, that God dwells in all Christians in a special way through our baptism. Uh, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us. Matthew eighteen nineteen, which you, you quoted, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in their midst. So not only are we, is Jesus present with us via the Holy Spirit, individually through our baptism, just as when Jesus was baptized, the, the Holy Spirit descends upon him, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. That's, you know, Jesus didn't need to be baptized because he was God, but he's showing us this is the way that as individuals, God the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us. So as individuals, God dwells within us. Collectively, there is a special way in which God dwells within us, as you mentioned in Matthew 18, 19. But then there is also... So in other words, we agree with you, Anonymous, on these things. However, there is a special way in which Christ is present in his church, and that is in the Eucharist. Because Jesus comes, as he said in John six fifty three. he said, "...unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you." Jesus said, this is my body on Holy Thursday, and St. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty seven through 29 that Jesus is actually present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist, and because of that fact, 
in the tabernacles in all the apostolic churches around the world that have valid Eucharist, Jesus is present in, as Trent mentioned in the last hour, in a physical reality. He's present, body, blood, soul, and divinity. So there is a special presence even beyond that individual presence where the Holy Spirit's in us. He's in us collectively. In Catholic churches, he's in the tabernacle, body, blood, soul, Anonymous, and I hope that that's helpful. If you have other questions, call us back or go to catholic.com.